Wichita in baseball. The history runs deep, and 100 years ago, one of the best teams in the nation was right here in the air capital. But you've probably never heard of them, and it's hard to even find them in the history books. This weekend, though, the Wichita Monrovians come back to life at Riverfront Stadium. So here at 12 News, we decided to shine a light on one of the pioneers of baseball here in Wichita and across the nation. Baseball is a game of great tradition. So its history has always been important. In the 1920s here in the heart of Kansas, baseball ruled all. Probably the peak of baseball interest here was in that era of the 20s. One team in town was tearing through the ranks of teams throughout the Midwest, featuring some of the best players the area had to offer. In the first 60 games, they won 52. Their league lasted only one season, and I think part of the reason was that the Monrovians were just too good for everyone else. Many of them were talented enough to go play on um, in the major leagues. They just didn't have the capacity or the ability to be able to do so. The Wichita Monrovians, never heard of them, most people haven't. And there's a reason the color of their skin. Black baseball was barely covered uh, by the news media. So the existing files, if you would, are pretty scarce. The way things were written weren't um, designed to be empowering for those communities and not make it a fact that, oh, it's a colored team or it's a colored player who went out here and you know pitched a perfect game. The Wichita Monrovians were the first all-black baseball team in Wichita that traveled all over the Midwest to take on opponents. When the team was back at home, though, they were welcomed by the black community in Wichita at the time with open arms. So it was a small percentage of African Americans here, so the Monrovians were the darlings of that community. They had uh, reported crowds at the Monrovian Park of 3,000 or more at times. But one of their most attended games wasn't at their own Monrovian Park, but instead at Ackerman Island Stadium downtown. On one scorching summer afternoon, the Monrovians took on racism in a game against the most notorious hate group in American history, as the Kansas chapter of the Ku Klux Klan was seeking to change its public perception. You know, it talks about, uh, it really promotes nonviolence and, you know, no razors or no horse whips or no, you know, other violent impediments. So they really wanted to promote nonviolence at this game. And, um, according to what's been written, you know, what we've known is that the game um, ended without a, a hint of violence. The game, one of the scarce ones reported in the Wichita newspaper, saying the rooting was enthusiastic and the crowd would have been a credit to the white leagues. The Monrovians took the contest 10 to eight for a win, not only for them, but for the Kansas black community. 100 years later, as the newest tenants in the city look back on what Wichita baseball has been, the wind surge hoped to bring back the Monrovians for one night with special throwback jerseys and a planned night of education on the historic team. You know, people get a chance to see, you know, there was a powerful team in the city of Wichita um, and wear the jerseys, you know, and, and be able to just kind of recapture, recapture that moment. I mean, I, I would say if Wichita doesn't have as rich baseball history, we're not sitting here right now. Once you get down to the details and you learn more about the Moravian organization and everything you do, you're not really surprised based on everything that they've done up to that point. I think that's super important to recognize, you know, Wichita is one of the cities that, you know, had a lot of interracial baseball even before, you know, the likes of uh, Jackie Robinson. I mean. well, Saturday night, the Wichita Wind Surge will pay tribute to the Monrovians by wearing those special jerseys you saw. We'll also show a full-length documentary following the game in partnership with the Kansas African American Museum.